two major changes have taken place. The first is that previously we had a bundle of various risk factors, testicular leukemia, metastinal mass, tumor burden, and we almost got rid, of, got rid of all of those. So basically today we say there's only two things that drive the therapy. One is the motor of the leukemia, that is the cytogenetics, and the other is the response to therapy, the chemotherapy, uh, MRD level at the end of induction, end of consolidation. It's also much easier to explain to patients that these are the drivers of the therapy. So when we started the, the Nordic treatment program back in the late zeros in 2008, we decided very early on to uh, include adult hematologists. So we have for the last 15 years treated children and young adults going from one to 45 years on exact the same protocol. So we use targeted uh, diagnostics to identify the genetic aberration that we think is of relevance. And we use two strategies for MRD monitoring. We use both flow and PCR. Uh, and with this combination, there's almost no patient, I think it's less than 0.2%, that don't have any MRD marker. So that has been quite beneficial. What we do see when we use this strategy, both for the younger children and for the adults, is that there is a skewness toward higher risk grouping. It's partly explained of some of the genetic factors, so the very good prognostic carrier types like 1221 and high hyperdiploid are very, very common in the young children, more than 50% whereas it's relatively rare in the adults. And they, on the other hand, have much more came to a rearrangement. So that's one thing that we see, a different distribution of genetic factors. And the other part is that when we monitor MRD at the end of induction therapy, there's a very strong correlation between age and MRD level. The older you get, the higher is your MRD, in spite of exactly the same therapy. And it's not explained by adults having a higher tumor burden. At diagnosis, it's really the other way around. They have a lower tumor burden. So we don't really today know how to explain that. It's very profound for the B cell leukemias. It's almost disappeared for the T cell. There's a small trend, which means that if you compare the immunophenotypes T leukemia and B leukemia for the children, the B cell precursors respond much better to induction therapy. When we go to the adult setting, the MRD at the end of induction is almost the same for B lineage and T lineage. So there's a lot of things to learn. In general, we see that both uh, the adolescents and the adults do slightly worse than the children, and they're much more comparable. So by expanding the cohort to the adult age group, we learn so much because it's toxicity profile of the adults and the response profile, it's much more similar to the adolescents than to the young children.